Okay, so I've been doing something new for pest prevention and treatment over the past six weeks now, and that is using beneficial mites. So I ordered the Ultimite combo pack from Copper. I'll have everything linked down below in the description, um, what I specifically have used, but I ordered a combo pack that targets both spider mites and thrips. It's two separate sachets that you can either put on the same plant or put on different plants. And I ordered that because I was struggling with spider mites at the time, like six weeks ago, I was noticing some spider mites popping up on multiple of my plants. And I was like, okay, I, I feel like it's going to be the easiest. I've been very overwhelmed with plant care this summer. So I just kind of opted for beneficial mites as like an easy hands-off approach to kind of just getting everything out of control for me. Am I gonna do this consistently long-term? I'm not sure, it is quite expensive, but it does save me a lot of time and I've been really, really happy with the results so far. But anyways, I went ahead and ordered because of my spider mite situation. I hadn't seen any other pests in my home. Um, however, I ordered the combo pack because I want it to be covered for thrips just in case because thrips are definitely the houseplant pest that scares me the most that I just do not want to see in my home. So I was like, okay, I'm going to order both. And then with the changing of seasons, if anything were to try to happen on me, I would hopefully be covered and the mites would take care of them before it got out of control. I really didn't know what to expect. I had never used beneficial mites before, but I have been so impressed. Oh my goodness. I feel like they took care of my spider mites so well. They were only, there was only active spider mite outbreaks on a few of my plants, but it took care of them so quickly. I could, I could see the mites crawling all over my plants. They're definitely putting in the work, doing their jobs. And I have felt generally pest free since I first applied them. It's been so, so helpful to me. So I decided that I was gonna go ahead and order more at the six week mark, because I think that between like four to six weeks is when you're supposed to um, put on another batch. So I decided I was gonna order more at the six week mark and that's where we are at today. It's been exactly six weeks since I applied my mites. So I thought I would just kind of turn on the camera and take you with me through my process of what I guess like my new routine is with these. So one thing that I don't like about using these beneficial mites is that I can't really shower my plants off when they have the sachets on because obviously I would just be showering off the mites. So it's kind of pointless. <laughs> um, so I decided that I was gonna give all my plants a really thorough shower the week before the new, or like a few days before the new mites came in. So it's kind of like a prep week before so I can shower everyone off, you know, get all the dust, get everything off of the leaves that could be on there so that they're all ready for the new mites to be applied. So that's what I've been doing over the past few days or so, whenever my plants have been due for watering, I've just been taking them into the shower, giving them a really good kind of wash, getting the front and backs of the leaves, getting them all nice and squeaky clean. And then when the mites show up, which they have shown up today, I'm just ready to apply the new sachets. I will say that I don't order enough mites to cover all of my plants because it, it would just be too expensive. They're already really expensive to buy. So I get 25 of the thrip ones, 25 of the spider mite ones. And last time I put them on both of my plants, or sorry, I put both of the sachets on the same plant. So I only was treating 25 plants. But it honestly worked out pretty well because not all of my plants really are prone to pests. There's definitely the ones that I know always have spider mites or are at more risk for pests in general so those are the ones that i was like okay let's um let's get the sachets on these ones you know it would just be too expensive for me to put them on all of my plants and they just don't need it so that's why i ordered what i ordered maybe as time goes on and i get more experience with this type of thing then i'll order something different or i'll order maybe sometimes just the spider mite ones or it just kind of depends like what pests i see popping up what i'm struggling with um, so yeah, that's kind of the rundown with what's been going on. I'm not experienced in this, obviously. I've only been using them for six weeks and the only beneficial I've used prior to this was lace wings, which I used for mealybugs and that worked well. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm still very new to beneficial mites. I honestly don't know that much about them. I'm just kind of learning as I go, but I'm just, yeah, I guess I'm just kind of documenting my process. So yeah, here we are. Anyways, the mites have arrived, so I'm gonna open up that package now. 
Okay, so my beneficial mites just showed up. So I'm gonna go ahead and crack into here. It does say to open immediately. You're not supposed to store these or anything. You just kind of have to be prepared to put them on your plants as soon as possible after they arrive. They're in this smaller box right here. That is what the label looks like for what's inside of here. And then all the sachets just come in there, they're divided. Um, so each type is kind of separated. You're only supposed to pick them up by this little cardboard part. You're supposed to try to avoid touching the actual sachet, but the orange packaging, the Swirsky Ultimite, these are more for thrips. And then in the yellow packaging, the Spickle Ultimites, these are more targeted towards spider mites. So you can put them together on the same plant, which is what I did last time. I have to really prioritize plants because there's 25 of each of these. So there's 50 in total. But like I said, I was putting them both on the same plant. So I could only do 25 plants. These are very expensive. This already cost me $100 um, like with shipping and everything to have this come here. So yeah, it would, it would just be so expensive to get sachets for all of my plants and not all of them need them to be honest. Like there's definitely plants that are more prone to things than others. Last time when I ordered them, I was struggling with spider mites on some plants. I hadn't seen thrips or anything else really, but since we're going into fall and I find that spring and fall tend to be the worst for pests, since we're going into fall and the one time I had a thrip outbreak was in fall um, or like the transition from summer to fall time, so that's why I decided to go for this combo pack of mites, just so that I'd be covered for spider mites and thrips. And it, it covers some other things as well, like different types of mites. However, this time I have unfortunately seen thrips on one of my plants and it's a new plant that I brought in a few weeks ago now. It's a Syngonium Milk Confetti. And I'm a little stressed. I have that quarantined right now. It's in a plastic bag as well as another plant that came, I got at the same time from the same plant shop. So those are quarantine. I treated them with Dr. Doom, um, but it was sitting on my shelf, unfortunately. I mean, luckily there wasn't a lot of plants on my new plant shelf yet when, this, when I noticed this, but it was sitting out on my shelf for probably two weeks before, well, yeah, probably two or three weeks, honestly, before I noticed that it was infested with thrips. And I only noticed it was infested with thrips because I saw aphids. There was aphids crawling on multiple of my plants. And then I noticed that they were coming from that syngonium. And then when I looked at this syngonium and was like, oh my goodness, I have to treat it for aphids. I also saw thrips. So long story short, I haven't seen any thrips on any of my other plants. So perhaps I've just gotten really, really lucky and they didn't spread but I do want to try to concentrate more of the like thrip targeting packets on my plant shelf, at least do like some of the plants that were around there and maybe my Syngonium albo because that's kind of in the general vicinity. Any plants that were near that Syngonium, basically, I want to have a thrip packet on them just because I just want to, you know, nip that in the bud before anything comes of it because yeah, I just do not need that. Spider mites are one thing, but thrips, oh my goodness, no thank you. So I guess I'm gonna start over on my plant shelf, just prioritizing the thrip ones, and I'll probably put some spider mite ones over there as well. These, oh, it says on the, I'll put on the screen, um, like the application of these, because it's either like one sachet per plant for, for each type, or if they're touching, it's like one square, one meter squared or something. So for, so for example, when I put them in my cabinets, I only put a couple or like one on each level. And because so many of the plants in there are touching, they were spread to the other plants. So I was able to kind of cover more ground, which made them stretch a little bit further, which is nice. And some of my plants are touching on the shelf as well. So maybe I won't have to use as many as I'm thinking. 
So I am for sure going to be putting the thrip ones on one of these plants here. They're all kind of touching. You see what I mean? So these three plants, there's a Hoya and then there's my dragon scale and subhastatum. They can all kind of share this packet. So I'm going to pop it. Where should I pop it? Maybe on here. I believe that you can put them either touching like the stem or the leaves or you can just set them in the pot like touching the substrate and then they'll kind of crawl up to the plant <gasps> oh my god you guys i literally think there's a thrip on there right now oh do you see that that would have been from the syngonium yeah that's a thrip i'm gonna get it what the heck <gasps> oh my gosh <sighs> that is not good that is genuinely not good hopefully these mites are gonna help me out for real this is the first time i've seen one other than on the syngonium which i've quarantined in the plastic bag fun times fun times i think i'm also gonna put a spider mite one over here just because why not might as well we've clearly got some problems happening also, if you've never seen these before, you just have to hang them and then there's a little hole there and that's where the mites are gonna come out from. So you don't have to like open these at all or anything. They're just ready to go. I think I'll put the spider mite one down here on the alocasia dragon scale. Okay, I'm gonna be putting one of each on my Syngonium Albo because it's living in this kind of thrippy zone next to the shelf. And I've worked so hard to get this Syngonium looking nice and lush again. So I really, I really would hate to see it get thrips or spider mites or something like that. So that's why I'm gonna be popping these on here so that she can have a nice, happy, healthy life. I'll just tuck them under here, I think. They're just tucked in there. I literally just found a thrip crawling on my brand new Alocasia Adora on this new leaf that just came out. So I just showered it off and I'm gonna put the sachets on it. <sighs> it's because it was on that shelf once again. So they obviously unfortunately spread off of that synconium that I got. Oh my goodness. I'm trying not to panic and trying not to get too stressed about it, you know. It's fine. I can't let pests stress me out every single time they happen or else it would just completely suck the joy out of this hobby for me. I'm just trying to remember that I've had thrips before. Yes, it was stressful. Yes, it took a lot of work to get rid of them, but I got rid of them. You know, that was two years ago and now I'm seeing them again. So I'm just going to do my best, um, try to get rid of them and try to not stress myself out too much. I know how awful it is finding pests. So I feel for you if you're struggling with them as well, but just, it's just plants, it's just pests. We will get through this, we will figure it out. Just take a deep breath, relax. We're in this together. Everybody gets plant pests and it will be okay. This black velvet is unfortunately on that shelf as well. And it actually has some old sachets on it still. I haven't showered this one off yet. So I'm just gonna do that now. I'm just gonna swap them out for new sachets, spray her down and then, um, Get her set up with some new ones. Okay, so I ended up putting the thrip sachet on that alocasia and then on the other one I put the spider mite sachet, but they're touching so I'm hoping that they will kind of share those, you know, I'm trying to make them go a little bit, stretch a little bit further. And then I also put a thrip one up here in my compacta. These thicker leaf hoyas aren't the plants that thrips prefer, but I have had thrips on um Hoya before, so that's why I just don't want to take any chances. I'm throwing a sachet in there. Okay, a lot of these ones down here had sachets on prior, like my Alocasia Jacqueline here had some. Same with that Philodendron, bro marks in the back. But they've all been showered, so I'm gonna be putting another set to replace them. And most of these plants are actually touching, so I'm just gonna throw them on, I think, the medium medium because that one's kind of in the middle. 
and I'll be monitoring to check to see if the mites are getting on all these plants. And you can also move the sachets as well. Like just because I put them on that plant right now doesn't mean I can't move them to a different plant later if I want to. You can definitely see them crawling around though. So you will know which plants they're active on. Okay, I don't know why, but I just feel like this manjula kind of gives me a sketchy vibe. Like I feel like if the thrips got a chance, they would go on it. So I'm gonna give him a sachet as well. And it's also touching my Syndapsis exotica and the Hoya multiflora a little bit as well. So it can kind of share with those guys. Okay, I'm all finished with the mite application. So I basically put all of the thrip ones on plants that are either in close proximity to this kind of area or plants that I know can be prone to getting thrips like Monstera. So that's kind of how I chose which ones to put them on. And I also tried to uh, think about like which plants are touching and um, yeah, just a few different factors in, in helping me decide where I'm going to put those out because, you know, we have a lot of plants to cover, a lot of space to cover. Um, well, I mean, not that much space. Like most of my plants are kind of close together. So I guess that helps for the spread of beneficials, but obviously it also helps in the spread of pests. So it's kind of, kind of a double-edged sword there. Anyways, I think I'm going to check in with you in a couple of days just to kind of update with what's going on. We'll probably be able to see some of the mites crawling around and um, we're going to check in with the plants that I'm specifically worried about, which is mostly this one, my subhastatum. This is the one that I've seen thrip activity on specifically. We've got our thrip packet there and I can actually already see, or I could see a minute ago that there was a mite crawling around over there. So they're coming out, which is great get to work my tiny little friends and then um the other one i'm concerned about is this alocasia up here so we'll check in with both of those hopefully it hasn't worsened um i also want to say that i know beneficials aren't recommended for like treating a big infestation but since this i feel is pretty early um hopefully it'll be managed by the mites but like i said i'm new to this so we're gonna kind of see what happens <laughs> But with spider mites, it honestly, they completely got rid of my spider mite problem. So if you're someone who struggles with persistent spider mites, or if you have some plants that are just super prone to spider mites, like for example, my philodendron mame, that one doesn't have spider mites anymore. And it almost like chronically, and it pretty much chronically keeps feeling like there's something in my hair, but there's not. It pretty much chronically had spider mites. But now that since I've had the mites on it, I haven't had that problem. So they worked very very well for spider mites like honestly better than i thought they were going to so i'm just hoping that the thrip ones will work well also my only concern is just the thrip spreading and then it getting out of hand because i don't have the mite packets for every single plant in this house you know so we'll see what happens anyways i didn't mean for this video to turn into a like thrip focused video i just happened to find that the thrips are still kicking around here i wanted to post this video just to share my new routine what i'm doing with the beneficial mites for pests so yeah hope that you enjoyed um i guess i will check in in a couple of days and we'll end the video then but for now they are all applied and we're starting another cycle which is fun i mean it's fun to me it excites me because i feel like they really do help so much 
Okay, hello everybody. This is going to be a six day update before I end the video. I just wanted to check in and first of all, show you what the mites look like on some of the plants because now they, they're, you know, they're in full action. They take a day or two to really become visible on the plant, I find. Sometimes it's right away, like same day, but sometimes I find that it takes some time for them to really start crawling around on the leaves. But they're definitely crawling around on a lot of the leaves now, so I just wanted to show you um, that in, in case you're wondering like what they actually look like. And then I just kind of wanted to talk about the thrip situation and how that's kind of going. Okay, I feel like you can see them pretty well on my Anthurium Magnificum Luxurians here. So, uh, this one has both packets on it, or does it? No, this one just has the Thrip packet on it. So, um, they basically look the same. Like, I can't tell the mites apart or anything, but if you... You can see, like, all these little specks around here. Those are the mites. So, I'm going to try to find one that's really crawling. Okay, this guy... Can you see him? right there oh it's hard to focus because he's so small see he's on the move he's on the move that's what they look like there's more there's like a few kind of down here um yeah you can see one on the edge of the leaf right there so they're not super oh there's another one crawling right there they're not super big or anything, like obviously these are very small. If you just looked from afar, like you wouldn't really notice them, but it kind of depends. They'll like really be out in action on some of the plants and then some of them not so much. I think it just kind of depends. Like when I, oh, look at right here. Oh my goodness. Look at these ones. These are the spider mite ones on my Soderoi and they are really going to town on there. I wonder if this plant has any spider mites on it. I find that when there's an active spider mite outbreak, these will be, or I guess any type of mite, uh, not any type, but these take care of like multiple types of mites. And I find that when there is mites on a plant, these are just like out to party, like they'll just be covering the plant. Oh my goodness, they're so fast. I don't know if you can see them, but they're so fast. They're just scooting around on there. Kind of hard to see on the silver foliage, but um, yeah, I guess those were some of the more visible ones. There's some on here as well so they are really small they definitely don't like freak me out or anything they're kind of fun to watch actually i kind of like that i can see them because then it tells me like oh okay this is working like they're the mites are working on eating the pests when i had the lace wings they really weren't super visible and i had heard that they're only or they're mostly active at night, like they're nocturnal. So maybe that's why I didn't see them a lot, but just not seeing them made me kind of question if they were even there or if they were working. But these mites you can definitely see. Yeah, it just kind of looks the same in the other cabinet. Like there's just mites running around on the leaves. I can actually see them on multiple plants in here. I can see one on the Hoya there and I can see some on the Anthurium back there. And neither of those plants actually have the packet. This one has the packet and this one has the packet. And the reason that I put it on the Epipremnum in the middle there is because it's kind of touching a lot of the other plants. So obviously they're being transferred to other plants, which is nice because then the mites can kind of just figure out where they need to be and what plants they need to go to. So yeah. Love that. Very, going very well in there. Oh no, you guys. Do you see that? Oh my gosh. That is an adult thrip. That is not good. Not good. You can see some of the mites crawling up here. Oh wow, yeah. They are like really on the cupria, which is good because I find that this plant can be prone to spider mites. So they're taking care of that. I think I'm honestly just going to end up chopping this plant up because it's already looking like crap and now if it has thrips, no, 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 no. Okay, well nice to know that there's another area that is having a thrips outbreak. Oh my goodness. <sighs> It's okay, I'm not gonna panic. Although it is annoying that this tends to happen when I'm going away. I don't even travel. Like I'm really not somebody that travels, but if I'm going away for the weekend or something, there will be a pest outbreak and I 
am going to be away for a week coming up here in a few days. So of course there would be a thrips outbreak in my house. A positive update about my philodendron subhastatum here. This is the one that I was worried about the most when it came to the thrips and I have not seen any adults. A few days ago, I did see one larvae or maybe two larvae in total. Um, and that's what the mites eat is the larvae, I'm pretty sure. I don't think that they can really do much for the adults, but it's the larvae that they eat to get everything under control. It's been a few days now though since I saw those larvae and now I just see the mites and I don't see any thrips. Thankfully, like you can see some of the mites running around, which is good. So I'm feeling good about that. We need to manifest the same energy for <laughs> over there. Like look at how many of my beloved plants are on that area and the freaking thrips are there as well. Same with this alocasia up here. I haven't seen any adults on it, so I'm feeling pretty good about that. Almost all of the plants up here are wearing the little thrip mite packet, so hopefully that will help protect them. Like, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see, I guess. Anyways, I just wanted to give y'all a little update, let you know what's going on in the world of my beneficial mites and in the world of my pest outbreaks apparently. I'll just be over here dealing with this and I hope that y'all have an awesome pest free day. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know how you're doing. Let me know if you're dealing with pests right now and which ones. I've heard for some people it's been a really bad year for thrips so maybe it was just inevitable that it would come for me eventually. Like I said, I haven't dealt with them for two whole years. So yeah, here we are. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.